So this is a video about the NCRT series. Okay, we'll be doing NCRT questions. Uh, the way to use this video is you pause at the questions, try the questions here yourself. If you're not able to do the question is when you do along with me, play the video and do along with me. And uh, let me again put this disclaimer that there is no substitute to you actually practicing the questions yourself. Okay, so this video is just designed for you to help, uh, uh, you know, to approach the questions at least. Okay, so some people are having difficulty approaching the question itself. Okay, so take this as video as a guide to approach uh, those NCRT questions. And once you have a foundation on NCRT, you will start knowing how to approach even competitive level questions. Okay, so this is just a foundation Do more and more questions after this video. Okay, and keep enjoying. Okay, so let us start with this NCRT problem. This is from chapter number three in NCRT, which is motion in a straight line. Okay, uh, in competitive uh, study, we call it motion in 1D. Okay, so this is NCRT level. Uh, let us start with this first question. The position of an object moving in the X axis is given to us as a function of time. Okay, so displacement is given as A plus B T square. You should notice here immediately that this displacement is not a constant, so I cannot find out velocity by just dividing it by time. Okay, since it's a function of time, it's a variable, we have to take help of calculus and the operator that we are using from calculus is going to be differentiation. But here's few of the quantities are given to us as in the value of A is given to us as 8.5 meters, B is given to us as 2.5 meter per second square and t is measured in seconds so what is the velocity so they are asking the velocity at certain times they are asking us what is the velocity at t is equal to zero and at t is equal to these uh, two seconds okay so let's first figure out the velocities at these times and then we will sort the next part which is asking about average velocity now uh, i think multiple times you, uh, this has been told in class key velocity is nothing but the differentiation of displacement with respect to time and if I try to dis, uh, you know, differentiate this function of time with respect to time, so let us differentiate d by dt of displacement in this case is a plus bt square. Okay, where a and b are constants. So here you have to understand key. If I try to differentiate a constant, the first term would become zero. Okay, and the second term would be b is a constant, so it will come out of the differentiation, and the differentiation of t square will be two times t. So the formula for differentiation of x raised to power n with respect to x was n times x n minus 1. This is the formula I used here. t square, 2 comes down and 2 minus 1 is 1. So this is how I did this. So velocity is 2 times bt. Okay. So this is the function for velocity. Now they had asked me velocity for two points. t is equal to 0 and t is equal to 2 seconds. Okay. So if I try to find out the velocity at at t is equal to 0, it will be simply 0 because when I plug in the value of 0 into this equation, you will see the velocity will become 0, okay. Uh, this will be equal to 0. So how, uh, how do I want to write this? So I will write this like this, v0. This means velocity at 0. v at 2 will be 2 times v into 2 because in place of t, I will plug in 2. So this will be 4b. Now b's value is given in the question. Okay, B's value is 2.5. Okay, so this is 4 into 2.5. That means this is equal to 10 meters per second. 10 meters per second. So the first part of the question is done. They had asked me what is the velocity at t is equal to 0 seconds and t is equal to 2 seconds. Next, they are asking what is the average velocity between 2 seconds and 4 seconds. Now, for average velocity, you don't need to differentiate because average velocity is defined at defined as what is the final displacement what is the my initial displacement and divided by the time taken divided by the time taken so i already have a function for displacement which is a plus b t square okay so uh, we are asked from t is equal to 2 seconds to t is equal to 4 seconds so if i try to find out what is the initial displacement it will be simply a plus b into 2 square 
Why 2 square? I just plugged in the value of 2 in this and I got what is the displacement at exactly 2 seconds I found out. Okay. Similarly, if I want to find out what is the displacement at 4 seconds, all I have to do is plug in the value of 4 in this equation, which means these are the equations. So the first equation is a plus 4b. The second equation is a plus 16b. Now, for, for finding out average velocity, I need the difference of these two. So xf minus xi would be a plus 16b minus a plus 4b okay this should be in brackets this should be in brackets now this will be a and a will cancel out we'll have 16 minus 4 equal to 12b okay now what is the chain what is the time taken so from t is equal to 2 seconds to t is equal to 4 seconds uh, time taken is how much 2 seconds time taken is simply 2 seconds 4 minus 2 is just 2 okay so for this the average velocity the average velocity is the definite is that uh, you know is the uh, is the ratio of this 12b divided by 2 okay so i'll get 6b and b value i already know it is 2.5 so this means this is equal to 15 meter per second okay 15 meter per second so i found out both the values of both the average velocity and the instantaneous velocity. For this second question, uh, they are asking us to obtain the equations of motion uh, for a constant acceleration using the method of calculus. Okay, again, this is one of the very favorite question for school teachers. They are always asking this. Uh, little bit of knowledge about calculus is required for this uh, basic integration and basic differentiation is what is required okay so there are three equations of motion v is equal to u plus at uh, the second equation is v square minus u square is equal to 2 as and the last one is s is equal to ut plus half at square okay so uh, for deriving the first one it is very very simple we are going to start with a basic definition of acceleration okay acceleration is defined as differentiation of velocity with respect to time this in the brackets i will write okay, this is from definition of acceleration from definition of from definition of acceleration okay this is how you will write uh, in 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 UTs, okay. This is how you have to write. I have already talked about this in one of the videos where I told you key uh, you can there is a set pattern to writing answers in CBSC, okay. And this is that pattern you need to follow. Okay, after that, after you write this, what you can do is cross multiply. I can write a dt is equal to dv. Okay, and both sides I can integrate. I can integrate. So I'll not do it in the same step, I'll just write here the integrating both sides both sides both sides of what right hand side and left hand side of the equal sign okay both sides so on the left hand side it will be integration of a dt and on the right hand side it will be simply integration of dv now limits i have to put limits okay so uh, whenever i am talking about velocity initial limit of velocity i represent by u generally uh, u is uh, used to define initial velocity final velocity is uh, given by v similarly the observation starts from zero and some random time t okay now it's already given in the question key acceleration is constant so that means a can be taken out of the integration and this will be simply zero to t dt okay this will be simply zero to t dt on the right hand side integration of dv is go uh, going to be so let's just write it here like this okay now what is integration of just dx the answer is x why because i told you key if there is nothing you can imagine key, there is x raised to power zero here and from there i can write zero plus one divided by zero plus one making integration of dx equal to x okay so if integration of dx is x on the left hand side you will simply get integration of dt will be t okay i'll have to plug in the values t and zero and on the right hand side you will get v integration of dv would be v and i have to plug in the values of v and u okay so i hope you know how to put the limits into the equation okay first you put in the upper limit and you subtract the lower limit so on the right hand side on the left hand side you will have at minus a0 and on the right hand side you will have v minus u 
if you simplify this a into 0 becomes 0 and you end up with that equation b is equal to u plus at which we were looking for this is the first equation of motion okay now let us derive the second one which is uh, you know b square minus u square is equal to 2as b square minus u square is equal to 2as okay so for this one again i am going to start with a is equal to a is equal to dv by dt okay but i'm going to make a few changes here i'm going to make a few changes here okay i'm going to multiply dx in the numerator as well as in the denominator so dv by dt and then i'm going to multiply dx by dx okay nothing is going to change because i multiplied dx in the numerator and the denominator as well okay so sorry for this okay so what i'm going to do is pair this and uh, this dt and this dx so i'll end up with this dx by dt and then multiplied by dv by dx i only rearrange the terms in this step okay dx this dx i took it here and this dt i took it uh, so i have paired dx by dt now what is dx by dt Rate, the rate of change of displacement with respect to time is what? It's velocity. So, acceleration can also be written as V dV by dx. Okay. This is one important result that is useful in other situations also. So, I'm going to make this a box. Obviously, it's not very uh, like this is from this is not the equation of motion I'm looking for. I'm still boxing it because this is important for future. Okay. So from here, what I'm going to do is what I did in the previous section. Okay, I'm going to cross multiply. I'll have a dx equal to v dv. Okay, then what do I do? I will integrate. I will integrate both sides. Both sides. Okay, if I integrate both sides here, uh, I'll end up with a dx on the left hand side and on the right hand side, I'll have v dv. I'll put the limits again. Okay, for displacement, I'm going to put from 0 to some value s as the limits. Okay, and for velocity, obviously, I'm going to put u as the initial velocity and v as the final velocity. Now, I have to perform the integration. On the left-hand side, acceleration is constant given the equation. So, acceleration can come out. Integration of dx will be x. I just discussed above. Okay, integration of dx will be x. So, I'll write x. And what are the limits? I'll put s and 0. Similarly, on the right hand side, I have I have to integrate v with respect to dv. Okay, so this is v raised to power 1. So the integration will be v raised to power 1 plus 1, which is 2 divided by 2 and the limits will be v and u. Now, if I plug in the limits, I'll get a s is equal to v square minus u square by 2. If I rearrange the term, I get the second equation of motion that says v square uh, is equal to u square plus 2as okay this is the second equation of this is the second equation of motion okay let's do this next question <clears throat> in this question uh, it's given to us a, a ball is thrown upwards with a velocity of 20 meter per second that is given in the first statement a, a ball is thrown vertically upwards with 20 meter per second and it is not just thrown from the ground. It's not thrown from the ground. This ball is already at a height of uh, 25 meters from the ground. Okay. So this ball is already at a height of 25 meters from the ground. Okay. Again, let me tell you, let me again tell you, he as physics students making diagrams is paramount. Okay. It's highly expected of you. He has good physics students. You are able to make good diagrams. Okay. Because half the battle is won if you understand the question and uh, what, how, how better to understand the question by making a diagram. Okay. So how high will the questions are, ki how high will the ball rise? Okay. Second is how long will it take before the ball to hit the ground? Okay. So uh very easy questions i'm going to use the three equations of motion to solve this i know ki the initial velocity of uh, travel is 20 meter per second okay and whenever some ball reaches the maximum height at exactly the maximum height the velocity of the body is going to change in the opposite direction but before that happens it is at exactly the maximum height the velocity has to become zero okay so what I can say is final velocity at the maximum point is going to be zero, zero meter per second. 
okay and uh, for the first part i have to find out how high will this rise so essentially uh, what i can do is acceleration i can take as minus 10 meter per second square it's given in the question why minus because it uh, the gravity is always acting in the downward direction and uh, what i always do is i'll always take upwards as positive and downwards as negative okay so that is why i have taken the initial velocity as plus 20 meter per second because i threw the ball upwards okay and acceleration is minus 10 meter per second square now if i use the second equation of motion which says v square minus u square is equal to 2 a s uh, in here if i plug in the value v square is 0 square this is 20 square 2 times acceleration is minus 10 into s here you will see e minus minus will cancel and s would come out to be 20 meters you can just simplify this uh, on the left hand side you have 20 square on the right hand side you have 20 s so one of the 20s will cancel out and displacement would come out to be 20 meters so the uh, the answer to the first part is how high the ball will rise it will be equal to 20 plus 25 is equal to 45 meters <coughs> Okay, why did I add 25 to this? That's because the ball was already 25 meters from the ground. Okay, so how if they are asking how high the ball will rise, the answer is 45 meters from the ground. So the first part's answer is the ball will be will be 40 mit, 45 meters high from the ground. Okay, from the ground. So you have, you have to mention this. Okay, mention this. Where where did you take this 45 meters from? From the building, from the multi-story building it is thrown from, it will rise 20 meters above that, above the building. Okay, but from the ground level, it will be total of 45 meters. Now, in the next question they are asking is, how long will it take before the ball to hit the ground? Okay, so what you can do is, uh, you can do this in parts. You can first calculate how much time it took from the for the ball to rise to that maximum height and from there you can find out ki how long it will take to you know fall come back 45 meters okay you can do that like that but i will do it in one single step how because uh, you know i want i like shortcuts we'll take a shortcut if the ball initially started with let's say 20 meter per second in upwards direction it will go high but it will again come back and then it will reach the ground so if i ask you what is the displacement not the distance what is the displacement the displacement is going to be how much it will be minus 25 meters it went 20 meters up then it again came back 20 meters and then it fell down by 25 meters so if i say the final displacement is equal to minus 25 meters there is nothing wrong with this okay there is nothing wrong with this what is the acceleration the acceleration is minus 10 meter per second square the initial velocity is plus 20 meter per second because i threw the ball upwards now if i use the equation s is equal to ut plus half at square half at square uh, and <clears throat> in place of s i write minus 25 in place of u i write 20 uh, t plus half into minus 10 into t square there is nothing wrong with this equation so let's try to solve this okay so the terms here so this will be minus 5 t square plus uh, 20 t right and then plus 25 is going to be equal to zero now if i cancel this with um, what should i do here yes I, I divide this equation by five this becomes minus t square plus 4t plus five okay now i can do a middle term break here uh, minus t square um, minus okay what i'm going to do here is that 5t minus t plus 5 this is the middle term break i am doing okay 5 t 5 into minus 1 is minus 5 so this is matching okay quadratic equation simple quadratic equation i am solving so from the first time i can uh, take minus t as common and i will end up with minus t minus 5 okay and from the second term if i take minus 1 common i will get uh, t minus 5 again okay so this will be t plus 1 t minus 5 this is the uh, factors for this so that means there are two values of time 5 and minus 1 so obviously we will neglect this minus 1 term okay 
So D is going to be 5. So that means from this equation I can simply solve for the B part it will take it will take 5 seconds to reach back to reach back to the ground reach back to the ground okay so that is how you answer a question again let me tell you if you have done the question uh, in such a way i found out from the top of the building to the highest point this is the time it took and from again from that position back to the ground this is the time it took and you added both of them that way is also correct okay that way is also correct okay <clears throat> next question uh, in this question, this, it says ki a woman starts from home at 9 a.m., walks at a speed of 5 kilometers per hour on a straight road up to her office, 2.5 kilometers away. Okay, so let's first write down. Uh, initially, the time is 9 a.m. Okay, she walks um, at what speed? Speed is given as 5 kilometers per hour. And the distance up to her office is 2.5 kilometers. Okay, if I represent this in a diagram, this this is her starting position. She goes to her office. Okay, she goes to her office. This, she goes to her office. And then this distance is how much? This distance is 2.5 kilometers. This distance is 2.5 kilometers. Stays up to office till 5 p.m. Okay, she works up to 5 p.m. Good for her. <laughs> good for her uh, she is working only up to 5 pm and she returns home by auto with a speed of 25 kilometers per hour okay so her returning speed is 25 kilometers per hour and obviously she comes back to her home uh, that means she again travels 2.5 kilometers choose suitable scales and plot the xt graph so that means i have to plot with all this data I have to plot a displacement time graph displacement time graph i know the initial displacement will be zero the final displacement should also be zero okay uh, but i don't have i don't exactly know what is the time intervals i know she starts at 9 a.m but when does she reach okay when does she reach but i can find it out you know there is no acceleration here so if she travels at five kilometer per hour uh with uh, and 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 the speed and the, and the, and the bot and the office is located 2.5 kilometers away then time taken will be time taken for her to reach the office would be how much it will be 2.5 uh, kilometers divided by five kilometer per hour okay so that would mean ki it will be uh half half an hour okay so 30 minutes 30 minutes it will take for her to reach her office and why am i finding out the time because on the x-axis i have to plot the time no i have to plot it like this okay this is 9 a.m okay this is 9 30 a.m okay and this is let's say this is 5 5 p.m and i need to i need to understand you when she when she reaches back home okay that time will be given by 2.5 kilometers divided by 25 kilometer per hour 25 km per hour because when she is returning she is returning in auto and she is traveling at 25 km per hour so this 2.5 km distance will be covered at 25 km per hour so that means this is 1 by 10th of an hour uh, which would mean uh, 60 minutes by 10 which is 6 minutes okay so she will be back home at 5 exactly 506 exactly at 506 so I have plotted important points on this time axis okay now you know the slope of a displacement time graph represents velocity okay so initially she is traveling at 5 km per hour okay so the line will be something like this okay she reaches the office at 9 30 from 9 30 to 5 pm her displacement is going to be same it's not going to change because she is just sitting there and working okay but when she is coming back, the displacement will again start decreasing and it will be back to zero. Excuse my straight lines, it's not looking straight, but this is a straight line. Okay, this is a straight line. So this is how the graph will be represent, represented. Okay, one more thing I need to add here is the slope of the line from 9 a.m. to 9.30 will be less compared to the one which is, so from, uh, because she is traveling uh, in auto here, 
here the slope will be more steeper okay the slope will be higher so here the velocity will be higher here the velocity will be low okay so this is how you can represent her entire motion okay this is how you can represent her entire motion okay let's do this question okay a drunkard working in a narrow lane takes five steps forward and three steps backwards followed by five steps forward again three backs three steps backwards and so on each step is one meter long and requires one one second plot the xt graph for the motion and determine graphically and otherwise how long the drunkard will take to fall in a pit of 13 meters okay so if i just try to do this analytically this is very very simple okay so if there if there is a guy his initial displacement is let's say five okay the next displacement will be five minus three which is two meters okay the next displacement will be this value plus five which means seven and then the fourth displacement would be seven minus three will be four okay so let's keep going let's see where it ends okay x5 would be 4 plus 5 which is 9 right and x6 the sixth step the sixth iteration of this step will be 9 minus 3 which is 6 so x7 would be 6 plus 5 11 and x8 is eighth iteration here will be 11 minus 3 equal to 8 okay so the next here x9 would be 8 plus 5 which is 8 plus 5 is how much 9 10 13 and this is where he falls into the pit okay because uh, if you read the question completely it will say he uh, the drunkard is going to fall in a pit which is 13 meter away okay now what i have to do is put this in a graph put this in a graph okay plot the xt graph for his motion you have to understand here he uh, the velocity is given to us the velocity is given to us each step each step is one meter and uh, it takes time of one second okay so the velocity is how much it is one meter per second okay so the uh, the slope of the lines will be 45 degree because i told you key in a displacement time graph slope represents what velocity so slope is one in this case okay slope is one in this case so slope will be equal to one and slope is also represented by tan theta okay so each lines the angle would be how much 45 degrees okay it will be 45 degree lines will be making okay so let's make a very nice graph here okay and then you will plug in the values uh, what are the important values here uh, two four six you have to plot okay so i'll keep on plotting till 14. well let's make it a little bit big okay also let's make it a little bit pretty also okay so let's use this line here hmm, now it's looking nice okay so let's plug in the values here let's take it two four six eight ten twelve Okay, and this is where the pit is 13 okay let's put uh, with the orange marker the in between values uh, let's call four between this is five this is five six seven this is going to be uh, nine this is going to be nine this is 11 and yeah that's that's 13 should be in orange actually okay, 13 is in orange okay the reason I uh, use different colors is just because I don't want uh, you know to you to get confused okay so initially the block goes up to 5 at 45 degrees okay remember at 45 degrees i have to make the line as 45 degrees so i go up to 5 and then i come back to 2 it's not i am i'm not the drunkard okay so the drunkard is going up to 5 and it is coming back to 2 again it will go from 2 how much it will go 2 to it will go to 7 so from 2 it will go up to uh, i'm trying my best here to make straight lines so he'll go up to seven okay so let me plot this here and then he is going to come back to four okay and so on okay so next he will go to nine okay then he's going to come back to six then he's going to go to eleven and then he's going to come back to eight and then he goes to 13 and he falls in the pit so the displacement time graph let me let me write down the values here this is time 
and this is going to be the displacement okay so remember every this line every time this will be five five seconds because the uh, each step takes one second and this will be uh, eight eight seconds because five plus three is eight time will not get subtracted you do understand you when i'm going in this direction uh like five i went in this direction and i came back three in this direction doesn't mean that total time taken would be five minus three okay it was time will keep on increasing whether you're coming back or going okay so this will be eight plus five which is 13 seconds then again eight 13 plus 3 16 seconds and so on okay so if you this is how the graph will look like this is how the graph will look like okay so you can you know give all designations to this and this is how the graph should look like okay any doubts regarding this put it in the comments let's do this next question a player throws a ball upwards with initial speed 29 meter 29.4 meter per second okay so there is a ball there is a ball which is thrown upwards with 29.4 meter per second velocity the first question is what is the direction of acceleration during the upward motion of the ball uh, this this words upward motion is kind of redundant here okay because the direction of acceleration does not depend on where you throw the ball okay if you have a ball in air it will always be attracted towards the earth no matter whether it is going upwards or downwards right the ball will always get accelerated downwards okay so the direction of acceleration for the first option the answer is gravitational acceleration equal to 9.8 meter per second square will always be directed downwards no matter where the ball is going okay so this is the first the answer to the first question is that the ex, the acceleration of the ball will be 9.8 meter per second in the downward direction what is the next question the next question is asking what are the velocity and acceleration of the ball at the highest point of its motion okay again there's there's a redundant redundancy in asking about the acceleration i don't care where the ball is i don't care where the ball is the ball if it's not static okay if it has not fallen on the ground if it is anywhere in its motion from upwards to downwards the acceleration will be equal to 9.8 meter per second square okay some people will be saying but sir at the maximum height the velocity will be zero no yes so why is the acceleration still 9.8 the answer is does acceleration depend on the velocity no acceleration we cannot have a body whose acceleration is uh, downwards and uh, and and the body so imagine if a body is at rest and we give an acceleration to it that at that particular instant the initial velocity is zero and it has acceleration right so this is the same case it may be at the highest point but it acceleration has not become zero acceleration is independent of velocity and it is dependent on the force acceleration comes from the force okay and what is this force here gravitational force the earth is attracting the ball so when the ball is going and stopping mid-air does the earth stop pulling it no it does not it's, st it's still pulling it so that means the acceleration at even the highest point will still be 9.8 meter per second square in the downward direction okay let's do the third question the third question says choose the x equal to zero and t is equal to zero to be the location and the time of ball at its highest point vertically downward direction to be positive direction of the x-axis and give signs of position velocity and acceleration of the ball during its downward the, during its upward and downward motion okay so here they are asking us to do a certain uh, assumption or certain convention we have to follow here okay so let me draw the diagram here okay so here i think uh, this is where we need to definitely make a diagram okay and i'm going to make a diagram with a different color okay so this is the ground this is the ground so there was this one ball which was here okay and it was sent upwards it was sent upwards and it reached a maximum height it reached a maximum height and then it started coming down it started coming down 
okay, it started coming down and it fell somewhere here okay actually it will fall back at the exam exact same spot but just because i want to you know designate the different directions uh, that's why i made it like this actually the uh, this is 1d motion that means the ball will follow the same path going up and same path going down but they will overlap on top of each other that is why i have made it little bit on the far side uh, to just that is just for my convenience to write down the things actually the motion is just on top of each other so this technically this ball is on top of this ball okay so i hope you understand that okay now the question says e let's assume ki this is x equal to 0 and this is t equal to 0 this is given in the question if you if you look at this take x is equal to 0 and t is equal to 0 to be the location and time of the ball at its highest point so at this highest point this is now considered the origin and this is where the experiment is going to start okay and they have also mentioned one more thing take downwards as positive and upwards as negative this is what they have given here vertically downward direction to be the positive direction of the x axis so any measurement done in the upward direction would be negative any uh, any 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 calculation or any vector which is pointing downwards will be a positive vector okay so now they are asking give the signs of position velocity and acceleration of the ball during its upward and downward motion during its upward and downward motion so let's first analyze what is the upward motion look like so during the upward motion the velocity is pointing upwards okay let me use a different color here let's switch back to white okay so during this ball when the ball is going up the velocity is upwards this is 29.4 meter per second okay and going when going up acceleration downward is 9.8 meter per second square the displacement here displacement here is in the upward direction let's say plus s let's call this plus s okay why plus because oh no actually this should be minus s why because upward displacement will be negative okay so this is going to be minus s uh when coming down this displacement will be plus s why because downward we have considered plus okay and acceleration will be what plus 9.8 meter per second square okay going up also the acceleration will be plus 9.8 but the velocity will be minus 2.9 29.8 meter per second okay so all the conventions i have written okay so let me write down this in a uh, orderly fashion so upward motion upward motion during upward motion the initial velocity is minus 29.8 meter per second why because upward is considered negative and downward is considered positive and the ball was going upwards okay what is the acceleration acceleration is plus 9.8 meter per second square and how much is the displacement during the upward motion it is minus s okay i don't know how much this value is actually i can find it out okay so let's find it out if a ball is sent upwards with a velocity of 29.8 meter per second what is the displacement it will happen uh, i can use b square minus u square is equal to 2 a s to a s okay so from here final velocity is obviously zero at the highest point the velocity is zero minus u square 29.8 square is equal to 2 into 9.8 into s okay so from here this is automatically coming out see the, the, the displacement is going to come out negative this is going to come out negative minus 29.8 into 29.8 divided by 9.8 okay so let's do this on a piece of calculator okay uh, calculations like these will not be in your uts or competitive exams they will always make the calculations easier because we are after the concept we are after the concept we are not after the calculations okay as engineer you have to have some decent calculations okay but doesn't mean we'll be able to do this okay doesn't mean you need to be able to do this in decimals at least uh you don't, you don't need to worry about so 29 point uh, 8 into 29.8 this divided by 9.8 okay so this will be 90 close to 91 90.5 okay 90.5 meters this is close to 90 point minus 90.5 meters and minus indicates what in our reference 
minus indicates upwards. So this perfectly makes sense. Okay, the bo body is going to go upwards nine uh, by ninety point five meters. Okay. So if it went upwards by 90.5 meters, obviously it's going to go down by 90.5 meters. Okay. So during the downward downward motion, during the downward motion, okay, initial velocity is going to be zero. Okay. Acceleration again it will be plus 9.8 meter per second square only. But this time the displacement would be plus 90.5 meters. Okay. In 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 the upward motion, the displacement will be minus 90.5 meters. Okay, so this is how you have to solve this question. This is how you have to solve this question. Let's do the fourth one. Let's do the fourth one. To what height does the ball rise and after how long does the ball return to the player's hand? So the first part we have already uh, solved. What height? The answer is 90.5 meters. The ball will rise up to 90.5 meters. And in the same equation, if you apply V is equal to U plus 80, you can also find out the time. V is equal to U plus 80. So all these data I'm going to put. Final velocity is going to be zero. Okay. Uh, U is going to be minus 29.8 meter per second. Acceleration is going to be plus 9.8. T will be T. Okay. So again, if you see, there is no mistake in this equation. How do I know this? Because if I take 29.8 on that side and divide it by 9.8, there is no mistake in this. If you take anything wrong in the convention, uh, not the convention itself. For example, if you took upwards and positive and downward as negative and then somewhere you mess up the direction, that is when your time will come out negative. Then immediately you have to understand, ki, okay, I made some mistake in, in taking one of the values. If you take any convention, upward, positive, downward, negative or downward, positive, upward, negative, the answer will come out correct no matter what if you follow that convention. Okay, so any convention you want to use, you can use, but always be careful. Uh, don't mix the conventions for uh, you know if you take upwards as positive all the values should be positive which are pointing upwards okay that is the only thing you have to be careful about so i am doing 29.8 divided by 9.8 which means this is the time taken going upwards is close to three seconds okay so going up and going down the time taken will be three seconds so this is how the, uh, you solve all the parts of this questions if you have any doubts Put it in the comments. Okay. Okay. So let us do this one. This question. Okay. In this question, there are four graphs given to us. And uh, we have to analyze each graph here. And we have to say ki if the graph is possible or not. Okay. And if it's not possible, we'll also have to give a proper reasoning for this. Okay, so the first graph here is a displacement time graph. It's a displacement time graph, which looks something like this. Looks something like this. Okay, so in this graph, uh, what we have to see here is that if I make a line parallel to, you know, x-axis, that would mean key at like for example, this is this time is let's say five seconds. So exactly at five seconds, if you see. This line intersects this graph at two points. That means what this graph is telling me is that at exactly five seconds, there are two positions for a single body. Okay, because what is what is what is written here? What is written here? It's it's, it's this is supposed to represent one dimensional motion of a single particle. Now, tell me why is this not possible is because if you, you draw it like this and you say he at a given time, at a given time, this graph, this graph shows that the position that there are, that there are two positions, two positions for a single body, okay, single body. So tell me if this is possible or not, not possible, okay, so this graph is not possible it's not possible let's look at the next one okay and this one can be exactly the same exact reason i can give for this also if i take a certain time if i take a certain time let me zoom in a little bit if i take a certain time this graph is indicating key for the same body it has two different velocities two different velocities which is 
not possible okay so the this second graph is also not possible uh this is not possible because uh for a given time there are two velocities for the same body the third graph is a graph between speed and time it's a graph between speed and time and we see ki at some locations the speed are negative this the value of speed is negative so again this graph is not possible the reason is different this is not possible because this is a graph between a scalar it's a scalar quantity versus time okay so this scalar quantity speed is never negative it's never negative okay speed can only be positive velocity can be negative because the negative sign will represent the direction but speed is a scalar quantity uh, there is no way speed is going to be negative so this graph is not possible because this graph goes below the x axis which means uh, it is giving me some negative values of speed uh, the last graph is a graph between length and time <coughs> okay length and time this graph is possible because i don't see any reason so initially the length is increasing and then it is decreasing and again it is uh, increasing okay so length is not uh, changing it's uh, it's it's never negative or any given time there is no two lengths and length is a scalar quantity it is always positive and it is evident from for this graph okay so this d graph is the only possible graph the other graphs are not possible okay so yeah that's it okay now let's do this question in this question they are saying ki there is a displacement time graph xt graph of one dimensional motion of a particle okay so initially it is given ki this is 1d motion this is 1d motion okay this is a displacement time graph is it correct to say that from the graph that the particle moves in a straight line for t less than 0 okay so before the observation before the observation if you see the blue graph the displacement is essentially not changing okay the displacement is not changing so is it true ki can i say ki it is moving in a straight line so the answer is no for the first part uh, t less than 0 from this this region to this region i see that the displacement is not changing at all okay so i cannot say whether it's moving in a straight line or not okay and the next part uh, they are saying is that uh, from 0 to some time t the body has taken a parabolic path actually this is a conceptual question the concept behind this is that path means the the actual path of the body which has nothing to do with this graph this is a graph between a uh, displacement and time okay if i made a graph between let's say if i if i plotted the cartesian cartesian plane of that area between let's say let's call this x length this is y length and then i gave you the path like this then i say ki, oh this path is parabolic but here the graph is between displacement a quantity versus another quantity okay this is not a coordinate plane where we are representing the movement of the body this line here does not mean ki the body he is traveling like this okay this is not traveling like this a body could travel in a straight line a body could travel in a straight line and then its displacement from the origin is calculated and plotted on this graph so i can say that the displacement the rate of change of displacement is parabolic in nature okay that i can say but the body itself is not traveling in a parabolic path that will only happen that that i can say only if i have a graph between x and y okay the actual area where the body is kept if that coordinate plane is given to us and there it is drawn ki oh the body is moving like this like this then i can say ki oh it is a circle or it is a parabola but this is a graph between the displacement and time it has nothing to do with the actual motion of the body okay uh, if not suggest a physical context for this graph okay so that let imagine imagine if you have a car if you have a car which you start accelerating if you start accelerating okay if you start accelerating what will happen is initially the displacement will increase slowly slowly okay so for a given amount of time let's say for one second this is the displacement in the beginning but now as the body is accelerating the next one second it will take a bigger 
um, chunk of uh, displacement then it will make even bigger chunks of displacement then it will make even bigger chunks of displacement this is this is what this graph is representing okay so initially this increase in uh, displacement is very very less for the same amount of time for the same amount of time this displacement is bigger than the the displacement in second is so let me zoom in so that you are able to see better okay uh, let me change my eraser also sorry about this okay now it is better okay so what, what you need to understand from here is very very simple if i take e equal amounts of intervals of time let's say this 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 okay these are equal intervals of time okay from here to here the time is same from here to here the time is same from here to here time is same approximately now if you check the displacement regarding this if you check the displacement regarding this you will exactly understand what I meant by this. This displacement is small. This displacement is bigger than this. And this displacement is even bigger than this. So what this means is that the, the rate of change of displacement is getting bigger and bigger. Which is uh, the physical significance of which is an accelerating car. Okay. For the same interval of time, the body will cover more distance in the same amount of time interval. Okay. So that is how you can answer this question. Okay, hope you understood. Any doubts? Again, put it in the comments. Put it in the comments. Okay, let's move on to the next question. Okay, there is no next question. <laughs>